Right, well, it's just coming up to 5 p.m. and uh, as you can see, the gear is in the car. I've just whipped down the M4 down to Acorn Fishery. So I've probably not fished this place in about 18 months. And uh, yeah, back then it was a super windy session and uh, based on this weekend's weather reports, it looks like it's gonna be a bit of the same. So uh, yeah, I've been into the office and paid my money for my 48 hours. I'm gonna be fishing swim number two, which is literally right out the back of my boot. So uh, yeah, no need for a barrow or anything on this session. I can just literally roll it out the boot and into the swim. I've been and stood in the swim just for a minute or two just to have a little look really I've not actually fished this swim before I fished a little bit around the corner in uh, sort of one of the huts on a day session so that's that bit of water is is new to me but it's still in the same sort of corner of the lake so uh, yeah like I said I've got 48 hours ahead of me it's going to be a wet one it's going to be a windy one so um, whilst I've still got some daylight and the sun is shining I'm going to get this lot unpacked. I'm going to have to have a little bit of a think where I'm going to strategically pl place my brolly because, uh, yeah, I could probably end up on the other side of Bristol the way that this wind, uh, wet and wind is going to be moving in this weekend. So, uh, so yeah, I need to have a little bit of a think where's the best place to set my uh, brolly up for the session. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I've got a bit of a, a score to, to, you know, a bit of a score to finish on this place. I had a little bit of a, a blank on my last visit, but that was only a day. So, like I say, I've got 48 hours at my disposal this time round. And uh, like I say, with a bit of wind and a bit of rain moving in tomorrow, you know, it, you could class it as carpy conditions. So, fingers crossed, you might be able to nick one. So, I'm going to leave it there. Like I say, got a couple of hours of daylight left. I'm going to get this lot unpacked get it set up and then I can come back to you and talk you through what I'm going to do for tonight anyway and then obviously go through the rest of the session as we go so I'm going to shut up now and I'll catch you in a bit. The uh, sun is just starting to set and uh, it's looking lovely in peg two, got a nice breeze blowing in, got a few options but we'll look at the Look at sort of what I've got to play with. Maybe tomorrow morning or something like that because I really want to get these rods sorted out first and uh, yeah, just get a little bit of bait over each one and decide what I want to do. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get, on with, let's get on with it. Let's get these rods sorted and get them out. Oh wow, a bit of a manic half an hour. Just as I've been sort of trying to get my own rods sorted, the uh, lad over my shoulder in what must be peg three it's uh, literally had two fish in about 15 minutes. So yeah, the fish slime on my jumper isn't yet from me, but it's looking promising. He's had a low, uh, low double, sort of like 12 pound or so. And I've just been and helped him with a uh, 23 and a half common, really odd shaped common, but uh, yeah, it's looking promising. Because originally he did have his rods in, in number two, uh, just while the person deserted number three, but then, uh, then obviously I've rocked up and he's like, that's fine mate, I'll get my rods out and go next door anyway. He's been out next door, yeah, wanged them out and like I say, he's had two fish in about 15 minutes, so I've been helping him just like weigh up his fish and stuff like that, whilst desperately trying to get my, uh, trying to get my own rod sort of uh, marked up, wrapped up and sort of distances sorted, so it's looking promising but yeah real odd shape common so if you are watching this video mate again congratulations real let's say result for uh, yeah turning up and banging them out for 10 minutes I'm actually in like I say swim number two which was one of the guys friends because there's a, there's a good half a dozen of half a dozen or so of them down here as sort of like a bit of a sort of a bit of a session a group session so yeah I'm kind of sandwiched in between him and his dad so peg one and three I'm in peg two and like I said they've got a few other few other lads just up around the corner as well so yeah they've got a bit of a bit of a session going on but yeah fair play buddy um, two fish and you know in 10 15 minutes and uh, yeah right right result so I got the rods in two of them anyway I need to uh, get these baited up get them out see if I can nick myself an early fish
go out. At the moment I've opted for uh, two on wafter rigs and uh, just little free bait sort of mesh stringers and uh, yeah like I say third one just to mix things up a bit just going to use it as a bit of a roving rod so you know depending on what I see just a little solid bag with a naughty new little hook bait and crammed full of mini my little pellet mini mix but yeah this is on a solid bag and I think I'm just going to put this out in open water maybe like halfway or so over towards where the two sort of islands are, are apart I'm just going to chuck it in sort of like the middle area of the channel of the islands halfway over and just uh, yeah see what happens for the next couple of hours it does get dark relatively early now you know you're talking seven half seven and it's uh, and it's darkness but I can just stand out just sit down watch the water and see what materializes really over the next couple of hours but knowing that next door I've had a couple of fish in the space of you know 10-15 minutes of putting the rods out it'd be silly of me not to get my rods out sort of ASAP and uh, yeah try and nick myself an early bite so I'm gonna shut up now get this one out and see if we can do the same for myself Done. Right hander just off this island. Left hander in line with this tree, probably about half a rod length off, just off that tree. And middle one, I've just chucked it basically in the mouth of the you know the two islands there, in the mouth of it, sort of in the middle. Just see what happens really. That one I've done on a solid bag. The other two I've done on wafters, um, just on slip D rigs. I'll talk you through them tomorrow. But I just wanted two on sort of like bottom baits, wafter rigs, the other one on a solid bag, and just see what happens really. Uh, I'm just kind of being a, gonna be a bit of a feel it into the feel it into the night sort of scenario. Reassess it in the morning. Obviously if I'm lucky to, to have a fish and I can chop and change and try and mix the rods up to maximise any sort of bite opportunities really so but uh don't even know what the time is so have a quick look so it's half six yeah and that light is starting to fade already so i just need a little bit of a tidy up in the little bit of a tidy up in the brolly that's a bit of a bit of a mess at the moment where i've just kind of chucked everything in and stuff like that and like i say rushed to get these rods sorted with obviously next door having a couple of fish you know really early on so it had been a no you know no brainer really just to get them rods out as soon as possible so um <clears throat> what i might do just on dark because i've uh, seen a few seagulls flying around i might just wait till it's dark and just ping a few you know handful of handful of boilies a catty at most you know a catapult pouch at most boilies just over <clears throat> over the areas just something to give them something to graze on really don't really want to say go gung-ho on the first night and uh, like I say I can reassess in the morning but for now I'm going to just chill out like I say just keep my eyes on the water because it is quite a pleasant evening it's a really pretty sun sunset earlier so yeah I'm just going to keep my eyes on the water for the next couple of hours <clears throat> and uh yeah see what progresses as the night goes on but we're out we're fishing now it's just time to make something happen it's uh just coming up to nine o'clock and um i'm ready to hit the sack nothing's materialized with a rod since it's been out i've had a couple of single beeps but yeah no uh no early bites for me yet um but the night is still young obviously i only arrived sort of five o'clock ish and the rods have probably been out what three hours now so uh yeah got a lot of time left yet through the night um to try and nick myself my, my first fish um but like i say i've turned up quite late into my session so we've got all day tomorrow another night and obviously all day sunday as well so yeah the session is still young but uh yeah i'm ready to hit the sack i've had a couple of crap nights sleep at home so um yeah i'm i'm flagging already to be quite honest with you so uh yeah i'm gonna kick back and relax obviously if i have anything through the night I'll get the camera on and uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll show you what's been going on. But for now, like I said, I'm just going to lay back, listen for any boshes until I fall asleep, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we get rudely awoken in the night with a uh, with a fish on the mat. But for now, I'll catch up with you properly in the morning, and uh, yeah, keep my fingers crossed that I can manage manage to nick one on my first night. So for the last 10-15 minutes, I don't know why, but I've been having a series of. Uh, beeps on my middle rod just like a did it did it did 
just sat there watching the rod. I was thinking, yeah, here we go. You know, a couple of the liners, they, they're getting in and around the boilie that I catted out last night. So I left it, like I say, for about 10, 15 minutes. Happened three or four more times. I was like, nah, something, something's not right here. It's not the wind. Um, you know, all the other rods are fine. They're all at the same level. The lines are all going in the water at the same level. Excuse me, it's not, it's definitely not the wind and it's not really, really picked up yet. So I was like, nah, something's not right here. So I've had the middle rod in, one of the rods that went out on a wafter. You know, for, I'd imagine now, for the best part of the night, that rod has probably not been fishing. Or if it, well, it has been fishing, but with that attached. Which is, you know, no use to anyone. Um, I did reel in the other rod with the other wafter on, so I thought, oh, brilliant. You know, if that one's, uh, if that one's been absolutely annihilated, I wonder what this one's like. But that one's come in absolutely fine. Um... I don't know if it's obviously just because the uh, the other ones are made up with obviously slightly slightly different more ingredients. Um, these ones do obviously these ones are a bit more feel a bit more more spongy alike than obviously the, the sort of food based wafters. Um, so I don't know if that plays a part in it. But yeah, that is not good, is it? You know, fishing for that rod's been out for 12 hours, and I don't know how long that's been fishing. So it looks like I'm going to uh, going to have to uh, change up and either go out all out on the other wafters, or even change it for a hard hooker, which I did sort of bring with me, um, just because I wasn't too sure what you know what what would be happening and uh, yeah if this would happen. But yeah, that just goes to prove that I need to switch things up now and, and change the change the hook bait. But the funny thing is, obviously, I had that solid bag out and that was on a real small uh, small wafter, so. Um, you know, I was quite surprised that they managed to to whittle that one down, um, considering there was an even smaller one that they could have got their gobs around completely and hoovered that up. But uh, yeah, it's not good, is it? So I'm going to have to uh, get these rigs sorted, get some new fresh baits on them, get them back out, and uh, yeah, hopefully I don't get pestered. But I'm probably going to have to uh, maybe do it, do them this morning. Do it, just reel them in and check on before bed and then again first thing in the morning because yeah that's going to start playing on my mind otherwise and um yeah it's not it's not good for uh for anyone's confidence when fishing so uh i'm going to get these rigs sorted get them back out and hopefully we can fish with a few baits on the hairs This wind is really picking up now. So, rods are out, right hander. It's just gone down into this open water area. I did scatter a bit of bait just off this area last night, just as an option. Middle rod, as you would have seen, has gone over to the corner, the face of the island. Left hander again, as you would have seen, it's gone about half a rod length just off this island. Now uh, I've catted out a few pouchels of bait over it because obviously um, if the fish have been nailing my hook bait then uh, I don't really know what's left of any, any freebies that I put out there last night. So uh, yeah, I've put a few extra catties out there and um, <clears throat> I'll probably do another, another one or two catties at lunch and then obviously some, some later on as well uh, tonight before dark. Nothing too mental, just a, you know, just just small pouchfuls, just to keep the, the spots ticking over, the areas ticking over. Because like I said, I don't don't know how long it's lasting, so I don't really want to just be fishing with single hook baits. But um, yeah, that's currently as it stands. I'm starting to feel the rain come down as well now. Like I say, we're setting for a wet and windy day, and I am starting to feel the old speck of rain start to come down. So might be broly bound for the best part of uh, best part of the day i've had a little check on the weather and it seems to be pushed back a little bit through the day so you know afternoon through the night i've got a feeling it's going to be uh, yeah going to be a bit of a wet one but we'll see but for now like i say the rods are out it's just gone nine o'clock <clears throat> and uh, i think we're gonna get some breakfast on the go and uh, just keep an eye out for this keep an eye out on the water see if i can see anything happening but look at that the wind's really starting to pick up 
backing in down here though, which ain't a bad thing. Proper pushing in down to our corner. rain is starting to move in now but uh, I've seen shows like where are we three quarters of the way over I've just seen one like pretty much just nut out over my bait right over on the far side and uh, about an hour ago I moved my, my solid bag rod just to sort of three quarters of the way halfway to three quarters of the way over and like I say I've seen shows in this whole area here it got to be just a matter of time before they come across some of that bait. But uh, yeah, it's looking good now that I've started to see a few shows. But I might just have to, uh, once this rain starts to get a bit heavier, retire to the, uh, the umbrella. But yeah, there's fish showing. Just hopefully this bit of, uh, this bit of rain might just switch them on. But yeah, come on, the carp. Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any to uh, kind of update you on my uh, recent happenings, really. If you uh, are a little bit eagle-eyed or uh, you're following any sort of my social media, you uh, would have noticed that um, I've been using some new bait. Now, unfortunately, after three years, my time with Baitech as a consultant has come to an end. Due to reasons out of my control, unfortunately, I've stepped down as a uh, consultant and uh, yeah, myself and Baitech will be going our separate ways. I've had an awesome time over the last three years and I really, really can't thank Haley and the team enough for everything that they've done for me. You know, from opportunities for writing features for magazines, um, joining the shows and everything else that comes with it, like writing the tips, uh, you know, catch reports and articles and all that sort of thing and even doing my videos you know I can't thank them enough so as I said my three years with Baytech have unfortunately come to an end so I spent a little time thinking about what my sort of next step would be and uh, yeah I'm pleased to announce that um, I am joined the team over in the Cotswolds Baitworks now Baitworks are no stranger to me because I've used their stuff prior to my consultancy and uh, I had great success on the Royal Marine so it was pretty much a no-brainer. I've moved uh, from where I live now and Baitworks HQ is literally on my doorstep so everything just kind of makes sense so I approached the guys at, uh, at Baitworks and we had a very in-depth conversation on the telephone and uh, yeah it seemed to be the right choice for me I'm really looking forward to the future ahead working with Bait, uh, Baitworks using the using the bait again like I say I'm a massive fan of the Royal Marine and that's what I was using before and I've gone with it again so yeah I'm massively looking forward to seeing how this relationship uh, pans out and obviously looking forward to uh, seeing what catch results I get on this bait I know a lot of you know in-depth research ingredients you name it goes into the bait and uh, yeah it just ticks every box for me um, and it was just a no like I say it was just a no-brainer really a no-brainer opportunity to get on board and uh, yeah like I say no get to get involved with the lads and some of the great anglers that they've got on their books so I'm uh, like I say I'm I'm with bait bait works I'm gonna be using their bait going forward at the moment like I say I've got some Royal Marine I've got some Creamino smells incredible I haven't actually smelt this before I picked it up but my god that is definitely going to be one for me going into the winter um, got my hands on some of the matching wafters for each basically I just picked up a little box of sort of like a little box just to tide me over this session really so 
box of uh, pots of balanced wafters in there. Got the pineapple house in pop ups 15 mil. Again in the wafters, nice and bright and visual, but absolutely stink. And then from a the solid bags, got the the smaller wafters, the barrel shaped, which again are perfect for the solid bags. So I kind of picked myself up a little box of goodies just to see me through this weekend and um, putting some of it, putting some of it to test. Not that it needs any test, but uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So currently been just been uh, jiggling around sort of bait wise on my uh, on my sort of rigs on this session but um, I've gone with like I say the, the visuals of the pineapple house really because the lake has been dyed since you know they've done some work and stuff like that so I don't really know what the visibility is like down there so I've gone with something really visual really stinky amongst my free offerings I've not gone plowing loads out this session just a couple of you know two or three caddies uh, sort of last night two or three caddies this morning I'll do it again tonight just to see me through like these sort of 12 hour cycles um, but yeah nothing to report at the moment but I just thought I'd bring you up to speed really with why you will see me have obviously changed using baits now but uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to using this going forward and uh, seeing what results it brings As I'm uh, currently brolly bound and probably will be for the uh, foreseeable rest of the day, um, I've just been tying up a few spare rigs really. Um, gone with the usual slip D rig because the bottom is really really clean. It's not long freshly been dug and uh, some of the tubing and the lead has been coming back with just smears of clay. So when I've been putting the rods out I'm getting a drop pretty much everywhere that I'm putting out, like I say, putting out my rig. So um, presentation wise, I know that I can get something on the bottom and it's going to be looking, you know, sitting flush and looking pretty. So yeah, what I've opted to do, rather than go for something that's blatant as a pop-up, is just stick with my tried and trusted slip D rig. Now, I've just knocked up a few, few fresh new rigs um, that I can just get baited up, get clipped on get wrapped up and get them out there later on tonight without having to faff around and getting drenched wet through so what I've used to uh, well I'll show you the rig first got a slip D rig and what I tend to do when I'm making them up is just leave enough to just allow me to tie the loop off at the ends to however however long I want to tie it really obviously with the bottom being so clean out there I could probably get away a five six inch rig you know something that's an, av an average sort of length and something that's relatively short but if I'm fishing over there something maybe a little bit more sort of stodgier something a little bit more you know sticky just a lot not tying them off straight away allows me to you know tie them off when I get to the venue and have a little lead around it gives me the option to decide then how long you know how long or how short I want the rig to be so uh, yeah I don't tend to tie the loops off on them I just leave them as they are but yeah I've got a curve curve shank hook little micro ring swivel there the little brake in the coating little bit of uh, graviton rig putty there just to help pin it all down and also aids the hooking potential as well as so once that drops down it helps that flip over and that catch in the in the lip there's a bit of shrink tubing like I say on there as well steam that down and then like I say the length of the rig is all dependent on what you're uh, you know what you're fishing over what I've used to create the rig tie it on hook length wise is the uh, micro strip coated hook link so it's in a 15 pound it's in a weed green and it's a really nice green. I've seen some on the market that are just a little bit, sort of a little bit too bright for my liking. Um, I like the sort of dull greens, the darkened greens, where you know they're just not sort of really that visible. So not, it's got a nice green coating on it, a dark green coating on it. The inner is nice and you know flexible, it allows for that pivotal movement for the hook bait. But it's nice and semi-stiff. 
to allow for any sort of, you know, hook bait to be kicked away on its descent and, you know, as it's been cast out. Like I said, it's a nice semi-stiff. I always kind of opt for a semi-stiff uh, semi when I'm using the slip D-Rig just because it lends itself nicely to those, you know, those sort of features that you require in the rig and like I say to be kicked away. I would also use the uh, I'd also use the micro strip for sort of booms on um, like spinner rigs, Ronnie rigs, because like I say it has got those that kick away property and it's got enough sort of suppleness about it just to once it's on the lake bed just to sort of arrange itself and sort itself out so it's laying laying nice and flush on the lake bed. But yeah it's a nice dark green not in your face, not blatant. 20 meters on there, and it will, you know, it lasts as long as you, as many, you know, as many rigs as you make, really. So that's what I've been doing whilst I've just been sat in the rain, micro strip, coated hook length. What I've also done, rather than bore you to death, speaking about the slip D rig, I've also made a separate video on how I tied the slip D rig. So go and check that. I've released it at the same time as I've released this video. It's a two minute rig clinic, something different that I'm gonna be doing on my channel. It's just doing, it's making rigs under two minutes, just an instructional video. So it's the start of a sort of new little playlist over on my YouTube channel. So yeah, rather than bore you to death on how I've constructed it, go check out the other video now and it will show you exactly how I've tied it for this session and obviously all my other sessions going forward. Slip d rig, perfect for bottom bait snowman's wafters. Go give it a go. Oh, look at that. Proper lashing it down. getting steadily worse and worse and worse as the date's gone on but now it's arrived torrential I do feel sorry for those boys on that match lake absolutely drenched through Right, so I've got all three rods in. Apologies if sound or audio isn't that great. Uh, the guys seem to be doing a lot of work down by the sort of shop end of the car park of the fishery, um, digging some sort of track. Uh, potentially it might look like it's for some sort of fencing. I'm not really too sure, but yeah, apologies if you can uh, hear, the, hear the digger in the background. I've had to reel in all the rods, um, get myself over to the shop just to pick up a can of gas. I was pretty much running on empty so yeah real helpful little shop on site if you need it you run out of essentials or you forget something etc then uh, yeah well worth popping into uh, popping into the shop I'm pretty sure they'll cover most scenarios but so, yeah as I've got all three rods in I thought I'd just give you a quick quick rundown of how I've got two of them currently set up and I'm gonna be converting the solid bag rod so making the third exactly the same so I've got a lead clip set up, tubing, about a foot or so, a foot and a bit of graviton mud brown tubing. The lake bed is uh, pretty much clean all over, clay type, so even when I'm bringing in the lead or even the tubing and the sort of lead clip system, it's just coming back with little smears of clay. So uh, yeah, I'm getting a drop everywhere that I cast out, so I don't need to worry about this diving into any silt or anything like that. So I'm going to try and blend this terminal tackle in to the bottom as best I can and like I say by this I'm using the mud brown setup heavy heavy tubing and that's gonna sink like a brick mud brown lead clip so you've got the lead clip sleeve and the lead clip like I do before just push it up to that little knobble on the lead clip that allows enough for the cast and if you want to sort of you know if there's any reason for needing to drop the lead then that will do that I'm not put the pin into the lead clip because there's no snags out there. It's all freshly dug. And uh, yeah, when the uh, fish shakes his head, it gets the initial force of the feeling of the lead. And then the swivel just becomes basically free running. So that will allow just the line to just pull through and the fish will just be able to make off and uh, you'll get a really, really good indication. Something that the fish aren't usually you know, used to deal, dealing with. Lead wise, I've got two and a half on that. Two and a half ounce lead on this one. Um, it'll be a two and a half or a three, really, depending on how much that wind picks up. There has been quite a bit of a crosswind, um, as I said, because the wind is hacking down from sort of like from what left to right down into the corner into peg sort of one. So the 
depending on uh, the, you know, the severity of the wind and how easy it is to cast. Um, you know, I'm, I'll do anything from a two and a half up to a three, but three absolute maximum because my biggest chuck is like what 40, 41 yards. So no, no need for you know massive leads. Just something that's going to get me there with ease and comfortably. So as I say, this is on two rods at the moment. I'm going to convert my third rod. Uh, to a lead clip system, a solid bag. Because I'm going to the, into the night, I'm going to change it over to a lead clip system just so I can put a bottom bait out, I can put a bit of bait around it, and I know that it's going to be fishing with bait around it rather than the solid bags kind of just sitting there. Most of the content possibly just getting hoovered up by sort of small fry, smaller fish, and just being left as a single. I'm going to put a, you know, a good few catties over each rod tonight and just try and, you know, try and spur them on into a bit of a, into getting their heads down and getting onto a bit of a feed. But yeah, that's what we've got to set up on the rods at the moment. <clears throat> nice, simple, easy, take anywhere setup. I'm going to sort this third rod out. They've already all been wrapped up, just in case of sorting the rigs, getting them out there, and we can see what happens going on into the night. All three rods are done. As you can see, the PVA, well, half a PVA nugget of foam there, just wrapped around the back of the hook, and uh, just trapping the hair, the D of the slip D, in place to stop that bait from twisting around the shank of the hook in flight, and uh, just a little free bait sort of PVA stringer but in a mesh just hooked on nicked on the end there and that's replicated as you can see over all three rods it's something that I showed you guys in one of my recent videos sort of all about PVA so yeah if you haven't haven't yet seen that go and have a little look just shows you how to use the various different PVAs out on the uh, market sort of in carp fishing nowadays but yeah those three are all ready and we need to get them out seven and uh, yeah we are settled in for the night I've uh, just got the brew on the go down there you can't even really see it but yeah got the kettle on just gonna have the last brew of the night think about just getting in the sack really it's uh, started to rain again it has been for about the last half hour or so but uh, looking at the weather report it's looking like it's um, men have stopped around sort of 10 11 o'clock and then that's going to be it hopefully for uh yeah the rest of the session be nice just to get at least tomorrow some of this gear dried off a little bit but uh yeah nothing's materialized like i said i've been in and out all day really slinging slinging a solid bag around sort of every two hours religiously just moving it to a different area of my swim just to uh just to yeah, try and nick a bite really, you know, stick a bag on a on a group of fish's heads, you know, and, and just try and nick a bite that way. But uh, nothing has, nothing's materialised doing that. Um, so what I've done looks out. I've got all three rods out, all on all on uh, pineapple hell uh, wafters, and uh, put a good four or five catties over each. Enough really to see me through the next twelve hours, if not more. I'm uh, just hoping that I get a bite through the night, potentially if not early morning. I know the uh, the last fish that I know of that come out come out at 5 a.m. yesterday. So uh, oh, sorry, 5 a.m. this morning, um, in which the guy turned up yesterday. So yeah, if it's going to do a, a morning bite, then I'll be more than happy. In the moment, I'll just like to nick a fish really and just get myself a bite. I do feel like I've been trying to you know work at it today, even though conditions haven't been great. So, uh, so yeah, that's the current real sort of state of play, really. So, gonna leave it there. I think the kettle is just about to boil. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Hopefully, I'll catch up with you through the night. If not, maybe, hopefully, first thing in the morning. I don't know if you can see, but the rods are in. 
I've had them all re-rigged up, down on there, ready to go. I've changed the third rod over to a solid bag. So down in there, I've changed it over to a solid bag. Um, I'm going to do exactly the same as yesterday. Stick to my two spots, unless I see anything otherwise. And just keep the solid bag roving around. Um, I've now got a bit more water to play with. Both the sort of guys, left and right, the party of uh, sort of you know the group of the group of friends that have come down. I believe for someone's birthday. Uh, the guys either side of me have now disappeared. Um, so yeah, there's a lot less pressure down in this area of the water, this area of the lake. So you know that's best part. That's best part of six rods gone. But um, but yeah, I've not seen anything this morning since I've had the rods in. So, <clears throat> like I say, they are in, they are rigged up, ready to go. I've got to literally wrap them up and then uh, drop them out where I, uh, wherever I want to drop them. But as I'm saying this, so there's a beautiful rainbow sort of just over my shoulder. And uh, yeah, that rain is starting to now come down. So yeah, I think I jinxed myself there. So I only get the camera under the brolly, get that PVA out of the rain and uh, get these rods wrapped up. It's just coming up to around lunchtime, and uh, yeah, we've got some beautiful blue skies still from this morning. Brolly is also dry, in which I'm going to uh, risk basically packing down and getting it in the car. Drying things off at home can be quite, quite problematic when you're uh, limited on space. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get that down. I'm going to leave the ground sheet though, because uh, one, is caked in mud, because look at that, it's an absolute mud bath down there. And uh, two, if it does start to rain, I'll just, chuck the, uh, I'll just chuck the ground sheet over me and any remaining bits that I've got out, just to keep it dry really. But yeah, I've just kind of got everything on the little pathway there, just reorganizing it. And I can get it straight into the boot of the car get it packed down got about five hours of my session left um, not seeing anything today um, not feeling confident at all that anything is going to happen if it does and I'll be uh, yeah I'll be massively surprised but more than grateful so got the two rods still one out on the island one on the island to my right and then because uh, the guys have moved, uh, gone from my left just kind of chucked it out to my left just a little bit of different water really someone has moved into peg one for the day so there's uh, no chance of me sort of chucking one down there but um, yeah all quiet at the moment really not really much to report hence why there ain't really been much filming so um, I'm gonna carry on and just get this lot sorted and get it in the car and uh, keep everything crossed in the meantime that something's something's gonna happen but um, yeah all quiet at the moment Okay, so coming into the last hour and a half of the session, it's just literally me, the rods, the net, what was a cat, and he's even deserted me, or she, I'm not quite sure, but either way, it's just me, on my lonesome, praying to him up there that I just get one opportunity of a fish. At the moment, I take a five pounder, 15 pounder, not really fussed, I take whatever, but uh, just for the sheer of sitting out here in the last 48 hours, I don't know if you can tell, but the bags under my eyes, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty knackered. I already had two nights crap sleep, and that was in, uh, in my own bed at home. But uh, yeah, this has been a gruelling session these last 48 hours. But if there's a fish out there that just fancies one little nibble up, there's three rigs out there waiting for you. So, uh, Gonna keep everything that I can physically cross crossed in hope that one of these just screams off in the next sort of hour and a half. I'll be getting the rods off the pod soon, just flipping them up and just laying them on the floor. Get that packed away. Literally everything is packed away by that little bucket that's just got essentials in it. It did start to rain a little bit earlier, so I weren't gonna risk sort of getting any luggage in that way. I just thought, you know what, it's all dry. Dried it all off in this beautiful sun that we've had today get it in the car there's no point messing about so fingers crossed let's see what happens in the last hour or so So 
I'm going to wind it down there unless an absolute miracle happens like I say in the next half an hour if you've made it this far thank you for watching I know it's not had any sort of fish content in it whatsoever it's been a grueling session I'm not going to lie um, I feel absolutely drained after this last 48 hours um, so yeah if you've got this far thanks for watching Acorn has beaten me up again so uh, I'm definitely going to be due another return visit to uh, try and put one of its residents on my mat it duffed me up last time it's duffed me up again this time so uh, third time lucky I guess but like I say if you've watched it thanks for watching as always feel free to stick any comments below um, you know I appreciate any feedback on the session but uh, but yeah just gonna leave it there for now like I say unless an absolute miracle happens in the next 30 minutes get myself home showered warm and I believe I've got a nice roast dinner waiting for me so you know where uh, you know where it hasn't happened here I've got something to at least look forward to when I get home so as always thanks for watching get in touch on any of my social media channels uh, you know more than happy to chat with you guys but for now we'll leave it there and I'll catch up with you next time I am out on the bank